Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods, back again with a new camera setup and a new printer to review. So, as you guys saw, we did the unboxing of the Creality Ender 3 Max, and here it is in all of its glory. Uh, I'm here to tell you my thoughts, my concerns, whatever it may be, uh, about the machine itself. Uh, but before I say anything, I will say that this is probably the best Creality Ender 3 I have ever tested. And that's a lot to say because as you guys may or may not know from my previous, you know, talkings and whatnot, uh, me and the Creality Ender 3 specific uh, series do not have a good relationship whatsoever. Um, but this one actually changed my mind. Yes, that's very true. Um, so with that being said, um, what, what makes this one a little bit better? Well, let's go over some points here. First off, it's a bigger build volume. So basically, uh, just to put it out there, this is Creality's answer to those who are uh, producing the Ender Extender kits. Uh, those guys hit it off and they are just hitting the ground running. Um, I know they are super busy. I really don't even know the guys, to be in all honesty, but I know they, they provide some quality parts and basically Creality uh, saw that and was like, well, there's a market for a Ender 3 with a bigger build volume. Yeah, that's technically true, but there's already one out there. It's called the Creality CR10. Uh, and to be in all honesty, that really is what this is kind of based off of. But there are some slight differences. Um, so let's get into that. So first off, you know, we have our uh, typical glass bed. Now these are a little bit different than the previous glass beds that Creality um, has put on their Ender 3 or Ender 5 or really any of their, their models that they had uh, with their textured uh, glass plates. These ones seem to be a little bit different. They look almost identical, but you can tell that the surface feel is a little different than it. Um, it seems to adhere a lot better than any other glass plate that I've used. Um, I've always had issues with uh, adherence um, with these glass plates, and this one seems to work very, very well. So um, I still do use, you know, the can of Aquanet just on the safe side, but I don't really need to use that with this bed. I've, I've tried it with and without. Um, this print does not have it with it, uh, so it's printing out very well. Um, this filament obviously is, is garbage. This is a Amazon return Sunlu filament, um, so I'm not expecting much out of it. This is just going to be a part that I'm going to throw underneath a desk and never ever see really. So I'm not really too worried about quality. So um, if you guys are watching this and you're like, hey, this, this looks terrible. Yeah, it definitely will look terrible because I guarantee that uh, filament is waterlogged. But anyway, let's get back to the Ender 3. So uh, what's the difference between a regular Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Max that we're talking about here? Um, this is obviously a bigger build volume. Um, I want to say it's a 300 by 300 by 340 uh, build volume, and I will uh, double check that here in a second. Um, but uh, for the most part, it is different than the Ender 3 in terms of how it's built and what it provides. Um, saying that, it's, um, excuse me here, yeah, so it's 300, 300 by 340, and I will leave links, uh, affiliate links down in the description if you guys want to buy this from the shop that I bought it from. It is not a Creality store, but it is a Creality retailer um, called Tresbo, and um, so what's the differences between the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Max besides the build value? So first off, we have a new hot end design. This is, I believe, carried over from the CRX design. Um, obviously, it's not a dual extrusion printer, so it's just a single head. Um, but the dual fan setup is a fantastic choice. This is something that Creality needs to put on all their machines. Uh, in my opinion, it is a great addition to their printers. Uh, it makes printing very, very easy on these printers. And really, if they were to put that on all their 
uh, models, no matter what uh, price range it is, even if they bumped up the prices a little bit, it would be absolutely worth it because these hot ends get really, really hot and the Creality hot ends are not great at all. Um, they have a, a terrible issue with the PTFE uh, butting up against in the, uh, the heat break area. Um, and there are fixes for that from uh, uh, Luke Hatfield, uh, One Bad Marine on Thingiverse. Uh, so it's, a, it's just a common thing. So you'll run across it every once in a while. But uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of upgrades on this printer. First off, we have a Meanwhile power supply, which is fantastic. That's something that you should definitely have with a printer uh, of this size and really of this price range. Uh, you know, I, I went over the dual fan setup, dual 4015s on each side. Fantastic cooling. Uh, we have an aluminum extruder, which is another great thing. Should be standard on pretty much all basic printers. I still don't know why they had plastic. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, plastic extruders uh, on printers, but uh, it is what it is. We also have a filament runout sensor. Now I will say that from time to time I do have an issue with that. And I think it's more or less a retraction issue. The reason being is that it is not sensitive enough to where it recognizes when it's doing a, a retraction. So I've currently been printing with this disabled, which is an unfortunate thing because that is a really, really nice feature to have. If you guys don't know about filament runout sensors, basically if this were to break at this point, because this is garbage filament, this will run through the sensor, trigger it, and it will stop the print until you load in new filament. So it's a fantastic feature, especially if you have, you know, rolls of filament that only have, you know, maybe a, a little bit left on the, uh, the spool, and you just want to get rid of it and you don't care about what color it is. Uh, it's a fantastic thing to have. So. Um, we do have the uh, 40 by 40 extrusion rail, which is really, really nice. I wish they had like what the Ender 3 V2 has, which is the knob um, adjustments. But again, that's more or less a cosmetic upgrade. I mean, it does help, yes. But um, what I mean by cosmetic is I can go ahead and probably print them. Uh, I'm sure there's a file on Thingiverse to do that. <coughs> so... Um, that's pretty much all I have to go through uh, in terms of, you know, at least an issue that I've had was the only problem was the filament runout sensor. And it was driving me mad because I go and start print and usually I walk away. Like, I'm, I'm good. It's a one and done thing. Like, I, I usually keep my beds level and they're good to go. Uh, and that's another thing with this glass bed. I have not had any warping issues with the other Creality glass beds in the past. So that's really, really nice to see um, that they have upgraded the glass beds to something that actually kind of works. And again, for the price that you're paying for this, which currently I'm looking at it on Amazon, it's $347 right now on Amazon. Now, obviously that might change, uh, might go up, might go down in price by the time you guys see this video. But uh, as of right now, uh, shooting this uh, March uh, 7th, uh, 2021, uh, it is $347 uh, on Amazon. And again, you can probably find that cheaper on Banggood or AliExpress or wherever you want to go. So it's not really, uh, not really needed. Um, one downfall I will say that I wish this printer had was a dual Z. So right now we just have the single Z setup <clears throat> that um, this, this printer has. It would really, really benefit to have a dual Z. But as of right now, I haven't had any leveling issues, but I still think with a bigger build volume, especially if you're gonna be doing taller and bigger prints and heavier prints, you want something that will be able to print this properly, uh, especially with how it's set up right now. It's got a lot of beefy setup, especially with this 4040 uh, extrusion rail on it uh, for the bed to keep it very, very tight. So uh, that's one thing that I wish that they would have. And I'm sure you can upgrade uh, sometime down the line. I'm sure AliExpress will provide upgrades for it. You can probably hit up the guys at Ender Extender, give them some dimensions, and get a uh, uh, secondary Z set up on that. Because uh, really, what you want is a Z belt drive. So you want a belt that goes up to the top, obviously on the backside, 
and then you want it uh, a single Z here. You don't have to have it uh, hooked up to a motor or anything. You just have to have them both hooked up and linked, basically, in order to get a fantastic print off of them. So uh, that's one thing I really, really wish that it had. But with that being said, <clears throat> one of the issues that I thought I was going to come across was you know, having wobbly issues. But with the bigger build volume, instead of having the um, upright sit on the actual base frame, it's got notches on the side. So it actually sits all the way down at the bottom and creates a full um, base frame, I guess you could call it. So in terms of structural rigidity, this is an amazing printer. Uh, so it has a lot of potential, especially if you start upgrading it and you put that dual Z on there. I don't think you'll ever have an issue with it ever, you know, besides, you know, your typical extrusion problems with odd ends and whatnot. But if you were to upgrade that to a V6, I guarantee this thing would be unstoppable. So that's just my opinion on that. Um, whether or not, you know, you want to go that route, that's completely up to you guys. But, uh, I think that would be a good benefit for this printer. So um, I do see that there is an uh, ability to add a BL touch on there. That's kind of a nice little kudos upgrade to where you can just throw that on there and not have to deal with printing out a mount or anything like that. At least that's what it looks like to me. So uh, there's two little screw holes right there, and that would be the perfect place for a, you know, a BL touch, even though... Me personally, I'm not a big BL Touch fan. I like proximity sensors over anything. Um, and one specific, the TH3D Easy ABL. So, um, but again, that's just my personal preference. So, but uh, other than that, I don't think I really have anything else to touch on. It, it, it's basically a larger version of an Ender 3. So, um, you know, that's, that's really all it is. You know, it's got some added features on it, like I pointed out, that are really, really nice upgrades. Um, you know, and one thing that I wanted to touch on last before I let you guys go here is setting this thing up is far easier than any Ender 3 I have set up. So normally when you set this printer up, you know, an Ender 3, you have to assemble this entire upright and the gantry. That causes a lot of issues because a lot of people don't understand that, you know, leveling a gantry is a lot harder than leveling a bed. While you might have a level bed, your gantry might not be, and you might have a lot of issues with that. So it drives a lot of people mad, myself included, when I first started into 3D printing. I didn't understand that concept. And it took me a long time to get a level frame and a level gantry in order to get a My Ender 3 working properly which ended up not working. So, uh, not because of that, for other reasons. But um, but this one's nice because the whole upper frame, including the gantry, is all set, ready to go. So it takes probably a half hour to set up, if that. Uh, so what, we have two, four, six, eight screws, I wanna say, maybe 10, uh, to set this entire system up, and that's it. That's all you have to do, you know, besides plugging in some wires. That's all you have to do. So it's a really, really nice setup. So if you're looking for ease of use, uh, a bigger build volume, uh, you know, a name that I would say you could trust, but, you know, trying to get a hold of Creality is kind of a mood point. Uh, so, but, I mean, they're a known brand, I should say, out of anything. So um, if you're, you're not too sure about getting a printer, this is actually a very, very nice Ender 3. I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but that is absolutely true. Um, I really, really dig this printer, and uh, it's been printing very, very well so far. Uh, you know what, let me go and get you guys some prints to show off really quick. Um, and some of you guys might know what these prints are. I'll show you really quick here. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you'll know that I uh, showed these prints off because, well, I wanted to print them. So if you guys are big fans of 80s and 90s uh, movies, then you might know what this is. This is one of the flying saucers, or aliens as they say, 
And this is another one from a movie called Batteries Not Included. Now, I will be completing the set. Unfortunately, I ran out of this filament. This filament is really, really nice. Um, I've had several people tell me that, you know, the structural rigidity of this filament is very, very good. And uh, I will post a link, again, an affiliate link of this filament below. It's kind of like a glossy, clear black. And this is the name of the filament that I used for that. So hopefully I can get that in a, get a good shot check the video afterwards but uh yeah they printed out very very nice you know some support um is left on there it kind of makes it a little uh rigid but for the most part they came out exactly how i wanted them so um you can print these in pieces these will be on on uh, thingiverse and i'll share links down below uh for all the stuff that i'm printing right now if you guys really really want it i don't know if you'll want this print uh because it's a mount for my Motorola modem uh, so I can mount it and get it up out of the way so but uh, I'll definitely leave links for the uh, the two prints here for the mother and father from batteries not included so and again you can print these in pieces or you can print them as whole I did the lazy part and I did them as a whole just because I wanted to see how they would come out um, these are about 30 percent infill so they're they're very very light and they look very very nice so i i really dig this color look at that sheen super super nice and the details are not too bad either i really really like this so um so yeah hopefully uh we'll get some more videos out we got a lot of printers to do reviews on um and i'm hoping to have some more free time don't worry um we will probably do another giveaway sometime soon i don't know when that is because the last one i did was just a really really drug on one so my apologies for that but uh yeah that's pretty much where i'm gonna leave you guys at right now with the creality ender 3 max so hope you guys enjoy the video and uh if you do like the video go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up for a like that would be awesome until next time, guys, happy printing.